30th of July 1944, Normandy, France. Advancing British armour is about to meet a new and fearsome German vehicle for the first time with devastating consequences. Allied forces had successfully stormed ashore in Normandy on the 6th of June, smashing their way through mostly second-rate German coastal defence units. But what had followed had not been a rapid advance to Paris, but rather a very difficult and bloody battle for Normandy as well-equipped German panzer and infantry divisions had arrived to try and contain the Allied beachhead. For weeks, British, American, Canadian and Polish forces had fought slowly through the ancient Norman countryside, the battlefields consisting of high, almost impenetrable hedgerows known as bocage, sunken lanes, fields and woods, and ancient towns and villages, the terrain favouring the defender, an ideal ambush country. The Allies launched a series of offensives to try and break out of Normandy, and the latest was Operation Bluecoat in the British sector, a plan to capture the strategically important Hill 309 and effect the capture of the important road junction at Via. Bluecoat was complementary to the American Operation Cobra, which had broken out of the western flank of the Normandy beachhead and caused the 2nd Panzer Division to withdraw from the Comor area facing the British to help stop the US advance. The British saw an opportunity to press forward against the weak 326th Infantry Division, then drive for 10 kilometres to secure point 309 and its roads. New to the battle on the 30th of July was the 6th Guards Tank Brigade, made up of famous Foot Guards battalions re-rolled from infantry to armour and equipped with the redoubtable Churchill tank. One of the battalions was found by the Scots Guards. The Scots Guards were founded in 1642 and are one of the five regiments of Foot Guards that guard the British monarch, the others being the Grenadier, Coldstream, Irish and Welsh Guards. Many people don't realise that the soldiers who guard Buckingham Palace and Windsor Castle in scarlet tunics and bearskins are real soldiers who also serve on operations around the world. And in Normandy, the 6th Guards Armoured Brigade was in the thick of the action in their Churchill tanks. The tank infantry Mark IV Churchill was heavily armoured and sported a 75mm main gun and was also renowned for his extraordinary climbing abilities. The basic layout was box-like and was formed of flat plates bolted or riveted together. The Churchill's frontal armour was an impressive 89mm. But the armour, unlike in some late war German tanks and tank destroyers, was not sloped and thinner at the sides and rear. Driver's position also afforded very limited views. The tank was also very slow, managing just 8 miles per hour, or about 15 kilometers an hour, off road. The guards easily smashed through the German outer defences and had soon outstripped their infantry support from the 15th Scottish Division. Incredibly, the unsupported armour was allowed to push on 6 miles, or about 10 kilometers, completely alone. This was to prove a costly mistake for one of the brigade's units, the 3rd Battalion Scots Guards. The Guards Armoured Brigade's Grenadier Guards took the main objective, Hill 309, while the Scots Guards was ordered to protect the left flank by occupying another hill, Point 226. Leading the deployment was S Squadron, commanded by Major Willie Whitelaw, later a very famous British politician under Margaret Thatcher the squadron occupying a position on the left, with the other squadrons to the right, centre and rear, respectively. Unbeknown to Whitelaw and his men, hostile eyes were watching S Squadron. Hidden nearby were three Jagdpanther tank destroyers, one of the most potent armoured vehicles of World War II. The SDKFZ-173 Jagdpanther, or Hunting Panther, was based on the chassis of the famous Panther tank, the Germans had tried to marry the powerful 8.8cm gun with a self-propelled design, but failed. 
The first attempt was the Ferdinand, and the second was the Nazhorn. The Ferdinand was too heavy, and the Nazhorn too small and underpowered. The prototype Jagdpanther was shown to Hitler in late 1943, with production commencing in early 1944. The casemate armour was 80mm at the front and 50mm thick on the sides, but also sloped to increase the protection. A five-man crew were completely enclosed within the armoured box on top of the chassis. The 8.8cm long-barrelled gun was the same as that mounted on the infamous King Tiger tank. This gun could destroy any type of Allied tank with ease. The British officers had dismounted from their Churchills and were about to assemble for an orders group when the Germans sprung their ambush. It began with a savage artillery and mortar barrage, so unexpected and intense that it sent the Scots Guards officers and men dashing for their Churchills, which were quickly closed down. But the first casualty was Captain Beeson's tank, struck by a 150mm artillery shell and knocked out. At 18.10 hours after 10 minutes of shelling, the artillery fire stopped and the German counterattack was launched, consisting of the three Jagdpanthers. The unit making the attack, Schwierer Panzerjäger Abteilung 654, had only 25 Jagdpanthers during the French campaign and only one company was committed to the fighting in Normandy with just 12 vehicles. But it was still a formidable opponent in the defender's paradise that was the Norman countryside. The British had not encountered the type before. The problem for S Squadron was their exposed left rear, caused by the failure of the Scots Guards formation on the left to get forward. The Jagdpanthers attacked from thick cover about 400 to 600 yards to the left rear of S Squadron. First to go were three Churchills of Lieutenant Cunningham's troop that was watching the left flank. Covered by the fire of the other two Jagdpanthers, one broke cover and advanced directly through S Squadron's position, shooting up any Churchills it saw. The Churchills returned fire, and at least one 75mm shell hit was observed on the Jagdpanther, which sheared off and drove away north. At about the same time, a second Jagdpanther came forward and joined in the slaughter, but was engaged by several Churchills and was driven off. The German gunnery had been deadly accurate. The Scots Guard's centre troop was eliminated, followed by the battalion's second-in-command, whose Churchill had its turret blown clean off. The right-hand troop also suffered severely at the hands of the two Jagdpanthers. The Scots Guards tottered up the damage. The action had lasted only two minutes, but in that time the three Jagdpanthers had managed to destroy ten British Churchills, plus another knocked out by German artillery for a total of eleven vehicles without apparent loss to the Germans. S Squadron was left with only four operational Churchills by the end of the day. But following the route taken by the two withdrawing Jagdpanthers, the British discovered that the Germans had not been quite as fortunate as first believed. The Jagdpanther that had stormed through S Squadron's position had withdrawn to an orchard half a mile east. At this position, the Scots Guards found a number of German tank tracks lying around in an orchard, which they believed to have been a German harbour area for armoured vehicles. Half a mile further on, they found the Jagdpanther in a field beside the road. It had been set on fire by its crew. The British officers took a first look at this new weapon. Evidently, this Jagdpanther had suffered track damage and had been abandoned by its crew. But continuing forward, the Scots Guards made an even better discovery. Half a mile beyond the burned out Jagdpanther at a small village railway station was a completely intact example. This vehicle had a broken left track and some damage to the wheels, but for some reason the German crew had failed to destroy it. The Jagdpanther was recovered by the 6th Guards Tank Heavy Recovery Section, the first example of this new weapon to fall into British hands. Many thanks for watching. Please subscribe and share, and also hit the bell icon to receive notifications of my latest films. You can also help support my channel through PayPal and Patreon. Details in the description box below.